okay, here we are going to present another useful trick to fit a linear regression and end up in a non-linear model. So like we did uh, with the polynomial basis, we can modify X using other techniques. For example, we can use an exponential basis function or a radial basis function. How we do that? First, we create a set of bases. It's going to be basically a set of numbers in, if, we are, if we have data in one dimension. And then uh, we apply the following function to the data column. We go over each x value and then we stretch the value by comparing it with each of the bases previously defined. So for example, if we have our matrix with data here, then it is going to be transformed in this way. Each row is going to contain the value of the resulting function by applying to the same data point every time the function, but comparing, comparing it with different mu's or different bases, right? So here's an example. Let's say we have the following set of bases found randomly. Later, we're going to see in the code how to do this in Python. So we get all these bases and then the XY, for example, if we choose this XY, instead of using this number as a feature or as the actual value of the, of the data, we're going to transform it to a vector containing all these different values the values in the y axis. And these values are basically how x it is evaluated under the Gaussian distribution given by, by this basis. So in this case, for example, the x evaluated under this Gaussian is a very low value because it is very far from this Gaussian. So when we are moving to the right, the Gaussians are getting closer to our X. That means that the evaluation of the X under those Gaussians start growing up. And this is why we get this effect. So this is the new representation of our value of X. Here's another example. If X is located here, these Gaussians are going to be the ones that have a higher uh, value for the X. And when we start moving to the right, then the evaluation of X under these bases or, or Gaussians start decreasing. So for this X, we get a different representation. And here's another example. If, if again, if the X is more to the left, we're going to have higher values for that come from the Gaussians that are nearby the X and start decreasing. So at the end, we are transforming each value to a vector that depends on the evaluation of the value under all the basis functions. We can see that these basis, fun basis functions are like radars or sensors that we place in different areas of the data. And then for each data point, point, we are going to transform it into the resulting value of how the sensor hears our data point across the area where the data lives. So again, we just need to transform the X matrix to phi, and then we apply exactly the same equation for the linear model. But we will, we will end up in a nonlinear fitting. Um, so now we are going to uh, do the Python code for the regression with the radial basis function. So the first thing we are going to do is to see how we could create this, this basis and we're going to plot them, right? So we're going to use a Gaussian function to create each of the bases. And uh, we're going to randomly select a set of uh, points from the, from the training cases as bases as well. Let's start by importing uh, some useful libraries we're going to need here. Uh, the f we're going to need SciPy for, um, to use the 
normal density function, the, P, the normal PDF. Um, we're gonna do a random seed. This time we're gonna use the numpy random dot seed to be able to repeat our experiments, right? Um, so here we're gonna need a parameter, which is like the number of bases, let's say eight to start. And then the sigma is gonna be, the sigma is gonna be how wide is each of the bases. It's basically the, the variance of the Gaussian functions. So we are going to select randomly a set of bases. For that, we are going to select a set of random indexes from, from the data, from the training data. For that, we are going to use the numpy random choice function. So this is gonna be from the shape, I mean, uh, the number, and any integer at the end from the number of rows. Here we are telling how many we want and uh, we want them to be with no replacement, right? Because we don't want, we don't want to repeat the basis. And the basis are going to be an ampere array of uh, x indexed in this basis I, IDX, right? The indexes one. Okay. So this seems to be working. Now let's plot. We are going to create a range for the plots. will go from the minimum to the maximum. Now I'm going, I'm using a bit different function. Uh, instead of the, I mean, instead of link space, we're using numpy arrange. We, we basically give it the limits and then the resolution, let's say 0 0.01. So there we have like some uh, domain uh, to plot our function. And uh, we are going to iterate over our basis and plot each of them. Oops, sorry. And here we're using the normal PDF. So here we are basically drawing each of the bases just to have a visualization for that, okay, seems to be fine. So those are going to be the bases. And now we need to create our regression model. So first we're gonna need a basis to uh, call the, the, the basis function. Let's use a Python Lambda function that is going to receive X and mu and will return the, exponen the exponential of uh, minus 0 0.5 times um, x minus mu. This is the Gaussian density, right? Divided by sigma square. Sorry, we need this parenthesis here here the square goes there okay now we need to create our phi matrix by using this function we start by the column of ones
So this is the data uh, is going to be the, the size of the data column. The same size. And one, right? This function use double parentheses. Okay, and uh, so how we create the, the matrix as we saw in the slides, we are going to iterate over again the basis. And uh, we are going to build one column that is going to be appended, stacked from to the right side of, of phi, right? So this column will be using this function that is going to receive an observation and the mu and uh, this is going to iterate over all the observations in the data. Uh, we need to use numpy array there. And that column must be also an umpire array. So now we just need to stack that column in the right side of phi. Okay, so now we have phi we're gonna need t which is basically the matrix where we want to predict in order to plot our our model so again t needs to start with a column of ones this is it's like this actually But instead of x, we're going to need the range. We're going to use the same range we used to plot the basis, right? And we're going to copy this. It's very similar. But instead of going over the observation, the observations going across the data is going to go across the range. Okay. Now we need to build our model, which is the usual equation that is up here. and uh, we are ready to plot. So the domain is range. Let's use this marker. I'm gonna use some alpha. transparency and let's show it okay it seems to be working but we better plot the the points right the training points Let's use blue points and uh, K. 
Okay, here we go. All right, so since that is working well, now we can play with different uh, number of bases. What if we, we increase the number of bases, we're gonna get a more complex model. If we want a smoother model, we just need to decrease the number of bases, let's say five. And there we get a much more smooth model. Some remarks about linear regression. One thing is like the variance of, of the estimation of our W or our model tells us how reliable is our estimation and is related with these two terms. So, for example, if we have a high variance for W, it means that our model is not so reliable because it changed too much. And how that model will change? I mean, first, it depends on the error variance. It, that means that if the error changes a lot across the training points, it makes our model more unreliable. In other words, it's like, for some cases we have big errors and for other cases we have small errors, it makes us believe that our model is not so stable and will change a lot um, with different training points. Also, our variance depends on this term and this term is telling us how far are our training data points among them. So the farther they are, this term will become uh, smaller and then the, the variance will increase, right? Because in, in, it, it, this is telling us like, you know, if you have too many training points, but all of them are very from, far from each other, it means that there's no information between them. So the model will be more unreliable, more uncertain, right? In the other side, if, if we have training, ports, training points that are really nearby, then we have more information in that area. So our model there is more reliable. Also, we could use re linear regression models to estimate the importance of variables. For example, for variable j, we just need to look at the beta j coefficient. So if, if that coefficient is high, it means that that variable is very important for the prediction. And another couple of details, uh, beta zero is the expected value of y when x is equal to zero, which is the beta zero is the bias term and beta j measures how much xj affects y on average. So in other words, when we say that the, a given coefficient associated with a specific variable is high, it means that it measures how much that variable affects on the prediction on average. 